All right, well, we're back uh, with another installment of Total Extreme Wrestling 2013, trying to make Impact Wrestling the best promotion in the world. Uh, and so far, we're off to an okay start. Not the greatest in the world, but that's to be expected. Our first TV taping uh, featured very few legitimate stars. Uh, TV taping week number two, uh, we just completed, and we had a little bit of a uh, an improvement to uh, to our roster, and so far so good. Uh, things are starting to turn a corner with some of the talent we've brought in to the Impact family. Uh, as you can see, we brought in names like Alex Shelley, Brody King, Chase Owens, Dalton Castle, Dave Christ. Uh, well, Dave Christ was already here. David Finley. Um, Flip Gordon, Jay Lethal, Jay White, Jay Briscoe. Uh, we brought in the Coffee Brothers. We brought in Lance Storm and Harry, or uh, Lance Hoyt and, and Harry Smith. Um, the Briscoes, the Coffees, Marty Skrull, Matt Taven. Um, some of the other pickups we we managed to snag. Tennille Taylor. We brought in. Uh, the rest of the kingdom, T.K. O'Ryan and Vinny Marsalia, T.J.P., Will Ospreay, Zack Sabre, uh, and on and on. So, um, not much left in terms of uh, offers that are out there. Um, looks like we are going to be able to sign Kyrie Hojo, or Kyrie Sane, for those of you who uh, who watch WWE. Mark LaMonaco, Bully Ray. <laughs> Uh, we, we made an offer to him, a one-year deal, as a talent that's going to pass the torch. And Bully, um, really, we don't need him to be uh, a main event player, although he probably will be like an occasional wrestler, most likely. If not, he'll be somewhere in the upper card. But as a guy who passes the torch, he's not really expected to win. So it helps us get guys over um, that we're looking to to move up the, the card a little bit or to legitimize. Uh, we also locked up Tessa Blanchard, who in my eyes is one of, if not the best, uh, female talent in the world right now. She's incredible, and the work she's doing right now in Impact, it's a shame that it's going unnoticed in the real world. In this game, she's had a couple of matches that weren't all that great, but I'm hoping we can turn that corner. Uh, and we're still waiting on word back from Kenta Hideo Itami for WWE fans. Uh, Talia Madison, I'm looking to bring her back. Uh, we want to lock up Johnny Impact, John Hennigan, uh, for um, an exclusive written deal to Impact. I don't want him meandering through other promotions um, and risk him not being available to defend the Impact Championship uh, at pay-per-views and TV tapings and things like that. We're also trying to lock up Sammy Callahan. And then uh, one thing that I added uh, away from the stream was uh, I made a couple of offers to bulk up our announce team because right now we have Josh Matthews, Jimmy Jacobs, and that's it. Uh, so I went out and I looked for... Uh, announcers and color commentators that were available to hire uh, that were excellent or very good to excellent on the mic and I came across Joey Styles and JBL so we made offers to them uh, so we're just going to be waiting for that to uh, to play itself out Kyrie Hojo needs a roster spot so we'll go ahead and uh, auto push that put her into the women's division so tomorrow we will do the same with Jay Briscoe, Jay Lethal, and Will Ospreay. Uh, and then Mark LaMonaco, Bully Ray. Uh, we'll, I'm going to switch over his uh, alter ego to the, the Bully Ray uh, alter ego. There we go. All right, so now we'll advance to the next day. We've also been talking a lot about... Uh, the history of Impact Wrestling, and um, we made our way up to, I believe it was like 2004 era Impact Wrestling, um, 
right around there. <clears throat> no, I apologize. It was 2000, uh, 2007, I think, where we talked a little bit about uh, their streaming, uh, which started in 2005 um, and was probably ahead of its time both technologically and in concept. People just weren't ready for that sort of situation for wrestling just yet. So um, from there... TNA also had a partnership with YouTube and supplied them with exclusive video content uh, and a couple of different internet shows uh, and mobile service. And that was somewhat ahead of its time. Uh, and then in 2009, uh, they launched their subscription service uh, so you could see like the old pay-per-views and stuff like that. So... Uh, a precursor to the WWE Network was uh, the TNA subscription service. And that uh, kind of rounds out the Audis and takes us into 2010, which we'll pick up here in a minute, because that's where things get really interesting, I guess. <laughs> um, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, because we've got some work to do here as news comes out. Uh, so, Conan apparently did a shoot interview on Eli Drake. Okay, I, I don't care. Shoot, cowboy, do what you want. Bullet Club picking up the, uh, the tag team championships in New Japan. Good for them. That's awesome. It doesn't look like anybody got fired. Nobody's really in any kind of trouble in terms of uh, uh, money-wise. So uh, nothing really needing to do with us uh, in terms of uh, looking to buy out other promotions. We did reach out to Progress to try to uh, have us be a parent company for them. They turned us down, unfortunately. Um, I do want to reach out to Wrestle One and see if they would be interested in being uh, having a, a relationship with us as a uh, us being the parent company and Wrestle One serving as sort of a feeder league for us. Um, okay, so we need to sign or get Jay Briscoe, Jay Lethal, and Will Osprey uh, their assigned pushes. We'll do that. Let's see here. Will Ospreay going to come in as a main eventer. I like it. I like it a lot. Jay Briscoe going to be on that upper mid card. Mark, same. So good stuff. All right. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. I'm excited. Alex Shelley will be available to start working tomorrow. Thumbs up there. Good stuff. Very very happy that we were able to overhaul the roster as quick as we did. Uh, we're going to bring in JBL. He'll be available next week to start doing some color commentary work for us. And we're still waiting on those five to get back with us. But our announced team just got that much better. And Impact Wrestling TV, uh, we are going to add JBL to that. And we'll add him to TV as well. Where is he? There he is. Okay. So he's on the pay-per-view broadcast. He's on the TV broadcast when he becomes available. And uh, just some announcements that people have uh, moved on. We need some time to heal. Feeling the effects of a grueling schedule. Wow, you're doing TV tapings once a week. That's... That's unbearable. I don't know how you do it. But yeah, you can see there's a lot of guys who are pretty fatigued. We'll keep an eye on that as, as things go on. Uh, I also saw an email in there that Jake Crist was unhappy with his push, but everything seems to be okay. <clears throat> it's still showing his status as a retired wrestler, so I'm not really sure what that's all about because we went in and edited the data so that he's not retired. He's He's participating. And uh, he's available to be booked, but it just doesn't reflect uh, in his 
in his page there. So uh, not much else going on today. We'll get to tomorrow so Alex Shelley can get his push and we can continue to work toward uh, our next TV taping. Um, looking at ratings too, by the way, uh, the the ratings for Impact last week were similar to what they were the week before. So we haven't. They were up a little bit. So we'll see if the uh, the new roster makeup can can help that. So uh, with the TNA history, though, uh, the Audis were uh, sort of experimental. It was kind of a weird time. They had a lot of stuff that was way ahead of its time. Uh, and then it didn't quite pan out uh, the way I'm sure they had hoped. But then 2010 is just when the wheels fell off this thing. So Impact decided to hire Hogan and Bischoff. Um, Hogan was a consultant. Bischoff is, uh, I think he was part of the creative team, or he might have been the executive producer. I don't remember. Um, so they uh, they went on this huge signing spree similar to what they did in 2002 where they picked up WWE castoffs and guys who really um, just for some reason they they really loved but they brought in guys like uh, uh, Flair and uh, the Hardys guys like that and really it, it almost hurt the promotion to a point because you had uh AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, James Storm, those guys, uh, I think they even had Okada at this point um, when he was uh, in the New Japan Dojo, uh, the Young Lion Dojo. He was he participated in quite a bit of TNA events and uh, just wasn't used effectively. And really, it was probably because of a lot of those guys uh, that they brought in from you know, the, the former WWE talent just blocking their push. I mean, there's no other... They pushed guys that used to be in WWE to the moon. So, um, that really kind of hurt them. And uh, at this point, you've got your um, Spike TV now on Thursdays. And I think that lasted till, I want to say, 20, 2014? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll continue on uh, the list here as we continue to talk about TNA's history and what we're doing, um, working towards TV taping. So we have emails and decisions that need a response. And, oh, hey, DJ Z, formerly with Impact, he is now... The AIW Absolute Champion, Mr. Anderson, is the Pro Wrestling Gorilla World Champion. Congratulations to Kenny Anderson. Last I had heard, I think uh, Ken Anderson was doing ring announcing for, uh, like, not UFC, but some other, you know, MMA style. Promotion, so haven't really seen him in the ring too much. Also, some news Kenta signed with AEW on a written deal, so we missed out on Kenta. It's all right, not a big deal. Uh, AEW signed Matt Cross. I, I love working with Matt Cross. I had an opportunity to work with Matt um, a while ago at a, a local show that we that I help with. Um, and, and my buddy Matt runs, and uh, we, we brought him in, and he was just fantastic. Tore the house down, had a great match. Uh, super cool guy to, to just kind of sit down and pick their brain. Um, had some great work in, in Lucha Underground. Um, just a, a really cool, laid-back, chill guy, so... Joey Styles gives us the green light, and he'll be available next week. So we missed out on Kenta, so now we're just waiting on Talia Madison and then two guys we already have under contract on paper appearance deals that we are trying to lock up. And there's our information that uh, Kenta had signed, and we are SOL trying to bring in Kenta. 
Uh, Russell One rejected our proposal to be their parent company. Okay, not a problem. And we need to push Alex Shelley. Let's see. Should be a main eventer, I think. Yep, there we go. All right, cool. Alex Shelley is a main eventer now. Okay, so we've got four days of TV taping, and uh, our roster is starting to stabilize a little bit. And for Impact Wrestling TV, we're going to do Joey Styles, Josh Matthews. Actually, you know what? We're going to do Josh Matthews and Jimmy Jacobs on TV. And then for our pay-per-views, we will do Joey Styles and JBL. So there we go. Joey Styles, JBL on pay-per-views, TV, Josh Matthews, and Jimmy Jacobs. There we go. Okay. So we've got our announced staff all kind of sussed out there. And let's see if we've got any tag teams we need to put together. I don't believe so. I think we've got them all. We do. Okay, cool. All right. Good stuff. So Joey Styles will miss TV tapings this week, but it doesn't matter because it's on pay-per-views. And here we go. Moving on to the next day. So with TNA's history um, in the, the 10s, as we continue to move through the 2010s, uh, they... It was kind of a weird thing at the turn of 2010. Uh, you had uh, guys like Hogan and Bischoff and Flair and Sting and Anderson and Jeff Hardy. And uh, a lot of those guys were were there. And, and holding back guys like AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, James Storm, uh, Bobby Roode. They were all in, like, the prime, not really the prime, but, like, the dawn of their careers. Okada, I believe, was there at that time as well. Um, and so you had a lot of talent that was there that just wasn't being utilized to the point where uh, they really could have had something. Um, and then you had some issues with, uh, with, with Spike TV uh, and the Dish Companies. And they were removed for a little while. Um, they started to go on tour, TNA did. Um, not necessarily like a tour, but like their TV tapings uh, emanated from different cities. They started to take the show on the road a little bit. Um, and then uh, in a really weird uh, situation, like... OVW was TNA's developmental. Think of it like uh, Florida Championship Wrestling for WWE before FCW became NXT. And OVW, I think it was in 2010, became their development territory. Within three years, OVW was done with TNA. Now, I don't know if TNA ended the relationship or if OVW did, but um, that, that was very short-lived. Um, and then uh, there was some issue. Uh, TNA decided to pair up with Wrestle One, uh, Keiji Muto's uh, promotion in Japan. And at this time, you also had, I think, AJ Styles was the World Heavyweight Champion, finally. Um, and this was also around the time where some of those big names from WWE decided they were going to leave and uh, let their contracts run out. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. As we've got unread emails, as always, when you move to the next day. Sergeant Slaughter's going to retire. All right. He is 70. I thought he was a little bit older than that. Wow. Okay. Let's see what else we got going on here. Hmm. Well, nothing really uh nothing really catches my eye as being uh, noteworthy in terms of us. 
Uh, I did see Puma King, which is Ricochet. Oh, no, it's not. I'm He's Prince Puma. Sorry. All right. So let's see what our emails have to say here. So John Hennigan has an 11000 per month deal on the table from AEW. Five years, 10% of pay-per-views. Hmm. Okay. Well, well, we're not going 65000 We're not going thirty. We're not going there either. Um, I really have some big plans for... for for John Hennigan, I don't know if I want to do a five-year commitment to him, though. Um, I'm willing to do four, and I'm I'm willing to just really shoot the moon on his signing bonus, but um, I, I'm not willing to, to do five years. That puts him at 43. And, you know, I'll give him a little bit of a, an availability push here and some wage matching and we'll see if that puts us over the top compared to AEW but that five years man I don't know if I can do five years Stu Sanders signs with AEW Talia Madison's got a paper appearance deal so we're still in the hunt with her on a written deal so Io Shirai and Ivalice start tomorrow. We've got nothing on the docket today left to do, so we're off. And we'll talk about uh, 20, late 2013, early 2014 um, in TNA. And in late 2013, AJ Styles left. Uh, Jeff Jarrett left. Um, and really, this was, um, how do I put it? Uh, Impact started to insult some of the talent that got them to where they were, like AJ Styles. And, uh, there was an interview that AJ did, um, I can't remember with who, where he the offer on the table to him from Impact was to he was going to take a huge cut in pay. And uh, so, he, I mean, obviously that's a slap in the face to a guy that's carried your your, your program and your, your promotion forever in a day. Um, Jeff Jarrett left to start GFW. Sting left. Uh, Daniels and Kazarian left. Uh, the Dudleys left. A lot of people left and then when all of that star power went away so did the tv deal um, and spike bailed in 2014 and uh, that really kind of put them in a weird spot where they were on uh destination america for a little while and uh, that really didn't go all that well um, but then they started to turn a corner a little bit and uh in like 2015, 2016, the the quote unquote Billy Corgan era, and uh, this this era is where things really started to build some momentum. Bef it pre Scott Demore, and we'll talk about that next um, after we get to our emails and decisions. The Miz. Stole the show at Raw last night, as he always does. I love The Miz. Dude is awesome, as his uh, his catchphrase will tell you. So, All Japan still having some issues with TV. They're not doing too hot. We really don't have much room to talk, because neither are we uh, with our TV ratings. But outside of that, nothing really happening. Io Shirai and Eva Lise have uh, joined the, f the fold here, so we'll work them in. And I want to look at our roster because I feel like we're getting, yeah, we're getting bloated again. 
We have 54 active wrestlers, 26. Uh, so let's take a look at wrestlers here. And I think we're going to say goodbye to Adam Thornstow and Lust of the Legend, Reno Scum. Really just not... There's they're not much there for me to, to do anything with. Um, I hate that. You know, Vikas Kumar, I have, I have zero plans for him. Um, let's see, what else do we got here? The Undead Maid of Honor. I like Casey Spinelli. She's good-ish. Uh, Tenille Taylor, Taya Valkyrie, she's our champion, so I can't really do anything with her. Sue Young, I'd like to keep her around. Scarlet Bordeaux is an interesting uh, enigma. She's she's getting there. She really is. Uh, Santana and Ortiz, the LAX. Actually, I just read today, this morning, that they're done in Impact. So they're going to be done for me, too, because I don't really see them having anything here uh, long term, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. What else do we got here? Kira Hogan I want to hang on to, Kaiju Hojo, New Jack Impact, Tina Lee. Okay, so Alicia Edwards, <laughs> I got I got nothing. I really got nothing. And the only thing, the only reason she's staying around is because she's married to Eddie Edwards. And if Eddie were ever to go away, in eight months, I could probably get rid of Alicia, whose contract expires in, like, just over two years. I could get rid of them both, but I really like Eddie Edwards, and I really don't want to go down that road um, to, to release him. But at the same time, I don't really, I don't have any, like, long-term plans for him. So, I, I, I don't know. My bully rays. Don Callis is still here doing the road agent thing. That's kind of cool. Uh, Eli Drake. <laughs> Eli Drake is great, wonderful talent. But I'm. It may come down to me making a decision that I I'm gonna be forced to make, and if I have to let somebody go think it's going to be Eddie and Eli. I like the North. I, th I think they're on the come up. I, I'm not a particular fan of Josh Matthews' work, and I'd much rather have Joey Styles and John Layfield doing their thing, um, but I can't do that until they, uh, they actually join the roster, so I'm kind of stuck with that. But uh, Alright, so we're going to stand pat because we kind of have to. And now Talia Madison's coming in, so that's going to be another person on the roster. Sammy Callahan got his extension. We're just waiting on Johnny Impact here. So AEW bumped up their offer a little bit money-wise, but we, we blew their offer out of the water, and I'm spending so much money trying to keep John Hennigan on this roster. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, so we're two days away from TV. I want to talk about the Billy Corgan era, uh, at least the first part of it. And uh, so after TNA was dumped by Spike uh, and they jumped on Destination America, uh, that really, they almost would have been better off not doing TV at this point because they were in a bad time slot. Wednesdays at 9 o'clock. Um, they, they really tried to do what they could. Like They did like this um, uh, throwback show where they had, uh, like they showed some of the best matches ever in TNA. Uh, they also brought in or, or re-upped guys like the Hardys and Gail Kim, uh, Abyss, Kurt Angle. There was a lot. Of, I remember in 2015 a lot of talk that Abyss could be headed to WWE. And thankfully, that didn't happen. Um, also, 
uh, Samoa Joe left, and then Billy Corgan became senior producer of creative and talent development in 2015. Now, Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins is a huge wrestling fan and has a pretty decent business mind. So when he jumped on, it was very interesting for TNA, and um, and really uh, it, it helped TV a little bit uh, with some of the, the creative that they were working on, and Discovery and Destination America saw pretty okay ratings considering everything, um, but... In November of 15, so basically a year later, TNA moved again, TV networks. They now and currently reside on Pop TV. And Pop TV, if you don't know, is basically the TV Guide channel, or it used to be. Um, so not exactly the greatest thing in the world. And again, probably better off just not being on TV. At this point, streaming is a thing. Streaming is awesome. And it would have made more sense for them to go strictly streaming in terms of cost and in terms of, uh, you know, just PR. Moving from Spike TV, which is a pretty okay channel, to Destination America, where it really doesn't belong. It doesn't really fit the rest of Destination America's talent or uh, television lineup to Pop TV which is basically, I don't know what to watch, so instead of using the feature that tells me what's on, I have to go to a specific channel to see what's on. Now, that's like old-school cable, right? And if you missed the channel that you were hoping to see what was on X channel, so you didn't have to actually tune to that channel, there you go. That's, that's Pop TV. Um, also, you had guys like... Uh, EC3 starting to really explode. Uh, Mike Bennett, Maria Kanellis uh, came aboard. They left um, Ring of Honor. Uh, also, Kurt Angle would leave. Bobby Roode left. Eric Young left. Velvet Sky left. Um, and Billy... Billy really kind of held TNA's feet to the fire, which we'll talk about the, the lawsuit uh, between Billy and Dixie and all of that. And, and we'll get to that here in a moment um, as we get ready to, to move on to another day here. Let's see what we've got going on. Okay, so not really much, not a ton happening. But we did have some emails. DDT made a contract offer to Scott Demore. Whatever, he can do his thing. I like Scott. Nick Aldis, who's on our watch list, signed with Evolve. Jimmy Jacobs going to do his thing with AAW. Sue Young, same with her for Shine. And Rhea O'Reilly, who is not on our roster, but she's on our watch list, signed with Defiant. Okay, so tomorrow, Impact Wrestling TV taping. We are moving on. And we'll talk about this lawsuit between Billy and Dixie and, and Panda and, and Anthem and all of that nonsense. So, um, Billy sued uh, TNA, the company that he was the president of, over a, uh, a debt that Corgan claimed that TNA had defaulted on to him, a payment to him. Uh, the state of Tennessee also hit him for some unpaid taxes. And then, um, then along comes the owl. <laughs> a lot of you remember this. Uh, Anthem Sports and Entertainment, who own uh, Fight Network. And they are the Canadian broadcast company for TNA. That's how they get their, their product to Canada. Um, they stepped in and offered financial assistance to the Dixie Carter side of TNA uh, to pay back Billy Corrigan and to keep them from having the lights turned out. Um, this was uh, right in that uh, point. There was a pay-per-view that TNA ran that um, there's a power failure 
and the crowd started chanting, pay your light bill. And uh, that really was a low point for TNA. And this was when WWE buying impact became a fever pitch. Vince made an offer. It, everything I had read and everything I had heard said that the offer wasn't that great. Um, and so really it was more for the, uh, the library than it was for the talent. And because a lot of the talent that they had had already been in WWE. So there was no real point for it. So um, they wanted the video library because a lot of the guys that TNA had wasted were starting to come to WWE. The Samoa Joes, the Bobby Roods, Eric Youngs, AJ Styles. Um, and what TNA did, instead of selling their library to uh, WWE or to a company, they sold it to the individual talent. So that's why when you watch uh, like a documentary about AJ Styles on the WWE Network or Kurt Angle, there's TNA matches in there because those guys own their own library. Same with um, uh, Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, those guys as well own their, their TNA library, which is really kind of cool. Um, after all of that went down uh, and Anthem was kind of saving the day, they Anthem brought in Jeff Jarrett to be a consultant. Uh, the TNA name was dropped at this point, and they went strictly with Impact. Uh, but you also had a mass exodus during the rebranding process with Anthem. So you Drew Galloway, the Hardys, Mike and Maria all left the company. And then came the merger with GFW, Jeff Jarrett's company, and they were going to do Global Force Wrestling instead of Impact. But then Anthem kind of reversed course and said, we're just going to stick with the Impact name. Um, and Global Wrestling Network, GWN, became the streaming service for Impact and GFW. But they do have some other content, too, but it's mostly Impact. Um, and then they split away from GFW. And, and Jeff Jarrett. So that takes us up to, I want to say, late 17, early 18. But we'll get to that probably in the next episode because it's TV taping day. And we've got some problems here in uh, Lucha Underground. They have some poor ratings. And that might come back to haunt them a little bit. But other than that, no uh, no real issues monetary-wise for any of these companies. So, Impact Wrestling is tonight. We've got some pay-per-appearance deals that I'm not really concerned with. The one I am concerned about is AEW's terms with John Hennigan. Still not being considered at all. So we can sit pat on our offer. We don't want to... We don't want to negotiate against ourselves and right now we are we're the front runners to retain his services permanently exclusively so we'll stick with that bully ray starts tomorrow after the tv taping so we won't see him tonight but tv taping tonight impact wrestling hopefully we can recover from poor ratings the last couple of weeks hopefully we're in Nebraska, always awesome, two-hour show, and uh, we are building toward John Morrison versus Sammy Callahan for the Impact Championship. Uh, it is a, a match that will see Johnny Impact retain his title, but I'm building toward that matchup. So they had a non-title match two weeks ago that was pretty decent. Uh, Morrison took on... Dave Christ last week and now he's going to take on Jake this week um, just to kind of keep it in that OVE fold in terms of the talent that's uh, that we pair Johnny Impact with and these guys are going to go all out Jake is more 
he's closer to a high flyer than Dave is. Dave's more of a brawler type guy, um, but Jake's not really a high flyer either. Um, but he does have more of that skill set that kind of works a l probably a little better with John Morrison. We're also building toward a massive six-man ladder match uh, at one night only with the for the X Division Championship, Rich Swan, the X Division Champion, and uh, Marty Skrull's going to be in that match. TJP, I've got a few other people in there. Uh, I definitely want Will Osprey now that he's available to be part of that as well. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be wild. It's going to be real wild to uh, to see that X Division match in action. But uh, Rich is going to hang on to the title till then. And then after that, uh, all bets are off. And you can see our July one night only pay-per-view right now. We've got Johnny Impact versus Sammy Callahan we're building to. We're building to Lucha Bros versus OVE. And uh, Tessa Blanchard versus Taya Valkyrie. I know that match was trash the last time we did it, but I kind of want to uh, tweak it a little bit and make it a little bit better, hopefully. And then here is our X Division Championship match. And uh, Rich Swan, TJP, Flip Gordon, Sean Spears, Vinny Marsalia, and Zack Sabre right now. One of these guys is going to get bumped out uh, in favor of... Will Ospreay, and it's probably going to be Vinny Marsalia, um, and I'm going to set that up um, by calling a one-on-one -on -one match between Vinny Marsalia and Will Ospreay, um, a, uh, you know, this is sort of Vinny putting his spot in the X Division Championship match on the line, and so we want to make sure that Will Ospreay wins that. So that he can be uh, in that X Division match. Uh, the the tag matchup we had, the Lucha Bros against OVE. So the Lucha Bros are going to go tonight in action. They're going to be up against Killer Elite Squad, who probably... I, I'm debating on adding these guys to the match just for a little sizzle. I probably won't. Um, in, in the, uh, the pay-per-view match, I should say. And then I want to do something with the women's division as well. And I think we'll put the ladies in a tag match. So we'll put Taya Valkyrie on one side. And we'll put Tessa on the other. And Taya Valkyrie can pair with... Hmm... How about Tennille Taylor, Tennille Dashwood, and we'll put Tessa and Shia Brookside, easy enough for me to say, together in a tag match. Let's see how this goes. I've been a little um, disappointed with the women's division and how things have gone in terms of match quality, so I'm hoping this new influx of talent will turn that around a little bit. And then we've got a um, TNA or Impact Grand Championship match. The Impact Grand Champion is open at the moment. It's vacant and I'm not going to book any championship matches for that specific championship until we get to the pay-per-view. So in the meantime, there's a lot that needs to be set up in there, and I haven't decided who I want to be the, the grand champion. Uh, I've leaned towards Eddie Edwards. I've leaned towards Alex Shelley. Um, I've even kind of, you know, had an inkling on somebody like a Brian Cage or, uh, you know, even a Sean Spears, but he's going to be in the X Division match, so I'm not... Uh, I'm leaning away from him more than I'm leaning towards him. And it may even go with somebody like a, a David Finley or a Jay White um, as well. Jay White, for some reason, still an opener. I don't know why. Um, 
his talent level is insane. So let's put Alex and uh, Jay White together in a matchup. Sort of a, a preview to the Grand Championship. I want to make sure that Jay White is kept strong in this one. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's see what we've got left in uh, up on top of the card. Oops. So we've got two, four, six, eight, nine. Nine guys left. And we've got a little bit of time to fill. So we're going to put Eddie and Eli Drake together in a match. I think we're going to do the Briscoes against the Gorillas of Destiny, too. Since we don't really have that many tag matches here on this show at the moment. We've got two. So we'll add one more. And we'll do the Gorillas of Destiny against the Briscoes. These guys will all be competing for a shot at that TNA Tag Team Championship. I want to see, while I, I'm completely uh, <laughs> completely out of left field here and nothing to do with Impact Wrestling uh, other than the fact that I just booked the Briscoes, but I want to see the Briscoes and the Usos in a tag match. I don't care who books it, where it's booked, how it's booked, when it's booked. Somebody needs to book it. Please. Begging. All right, so we're going to look at Jay Lethal and Sammy Callahan for some reason. This this is just a match for Sammy to have a match on TV, so he doesn't get mad that I left him off of TV. It's funny because in this game, you know, you get guys that, uh, you know, are fatigued to a certain degree, so you give them time off, and then they get mad that they're not on TV. Um, so, I don't know. It's, it's a tough balance, and you can give guys time off. I typically don't unless, you know, it's post-pay-per-view and I can do without them on TV for a couple of weeks. You know, if they're headed towards an injury possibility, then that's something that uh, I'll consider. But All right, so our match, our final match that we're going to book tonight is Sean Spears and TJP. More WWE cast-offs doing their thing in Impact Wrestling. Which I'm totally okay with, by the way. Not upset about that at all. Okay, so we are about 15 minutes short. So, we'll bump up this Eddie Edwards-Eli Drake match a little bit. There we go. And we'll bump up... The Gorillas Briscoes match. All right, there we go. So we are at two hours of Impact Wrestling greatness. Here we go. All right. Wow, that was a much better match than I than we've seen before. Alex Shelley and Jay White with a C rating, which is good for Impact, considering what we were doing the last couple of weeks. A B minus out of the Gorillas and the Briscoes. I am really liking this new roster already. This is good stuff. We get a C out of Sean Spears and TJP. We get a C minus out of the women's division match, the tag match. That's fantastic. What else we got here? Jay Lethal and Sammy Callahan with a uh, C rating. We've got Eddie Edwards and Eli Drake with a C plus. Great chemistry together. That is something I will definitely keep in mind, maybe for that grand championship. Lucha Bros and Killer Elite Squad had a great match. Wow. Will Ospreay, Vinny Marsalia. 
pulling it off with a B minus. Rich Swan and Marty Skrull. Match was poorly placed. The crowd was already pretty hot. So running a match designed to warm them up fell flat. Okay. So yeah, that that's on me. That was my bad. And th there was a poor announced team. So yeah, we're probably going to move on from Josh Matthews and Jimmy Jacobs. And Johnny Impact, Jake Christ. Got a C plus. So the match of the night belongs to Will Ospreay and Vinny Marsalia and... Wheels of Destiny and the Briscoe Brothers. Our popularity increased in 21 regions. That's what we were hoping for. An overall C+, plus, a much better TV taping than last week. So we are trending in the right direction. Thank God. I was worried that this was going to be a, uh, a fruitless endeavor, if you will, uh, trying to get TNA to the top of the ladder. So... Um, that's uh, probably going to wrap it up for this stream today. Uh, tomorrow we will talk about uh, impact post-global force, post-lawsuit, and the beginning of the Anthem era in impact, which will take us up to, for the most part, the present. Um, and... Yeah, I think that'll take us up to to the present. And then we'll continue to focus on uh, trying to get TNA to the top of the ladder. And uh, also, we should be nearing our first pay-per-view. Yep, one night only is in two days. So, perfect timing because Bully Ray is going to be joining the roster. JBL starts tomorrow. Uh, so he's going to be here just in time. Uh, what about Joey Styles? I think Joey Styles might miss this pay-per-view. It's going to be going to be close. We've got some decisions. I'm hoping. Yes, it's Johnny Impact. So Johnny is ours for the next four years. Got him locked up. I love it. That is fantastic. And our ratings came in, so we got a .27 on the Fight Network, which is better than what we did last time. So we're continuing to increase our ratings. Uh, spike in the UK, the ratings went up, and a .0 or 0 .81 on Pop. That is much better than last week. So we are trending in the right direction, and uh, we've got a long way to go before we can catch the WWE, but. We are making the right moves and putting people in the right places to make us top shelf. So tomorrow, when we get uh, when we get streaming again tomorrow, we will take a look at Impact's One Night Only July. We'll book the rest of the card out for that. We will finish our little breakdown of the history of Impact Wrestling as we move into the Anthem Sports and Entertainment era, the Scott Demore era, and. Uh, the Don Callis era to a, a, another extent. They're basically co-presidents or co-vice presidents, whatever you want to call them, and, uh, and talk about their relationship with, with Twitch. So um, we'll see how things go uh, with Impact One Night Only, and we'll see how things uh, break down with the rest of the Impact history. My name is the Mayor Jason Smith. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow.